You know, what I love about the comics is the fact that in the comic world you can escape, you can fantasize, you can imagine yourself being something greater than you are now, and you all are very great. But this particular story is not like, you know, your gratuitous action and just a slasher, bang, kick, punch kind of story. This one, we wanted to have substance. We wanted to layer it with unpredictables, with things that you're not going to expect. I would say it's uh, Seven meets Blade Runner. Story about a hardball detective pursuing a serial killer living in the shadow of his father. And in his pursuit, he uncovers some of the world's darkest secrets. So our character, Niles, Niles Roach. I think one of the beautiful things about this character is that he has the kind of instincts that drive him to find the truth. But sometimes it destroys the people around him. I figured I'd pull something from where I grew up in the Bronx, something I can really relate to. See, what's beautiful about this is that it's in book form. It's tactile. You can touch it. You can flip it. You can read it. You can hold it. You can sleep on it if you want it. If you loved all of the stuff we did before in the Blade world, this is something that you're going to appreciate. We got murder, mayhem, noir cities, uh, custom weapons, beautiful artwork, drama, suspense. Look forward to seeing you participating, joining us, take this ride. And uh, here we go. As a man, you're defined by your father. You spend your whole life trying to crawl out from under his shadow. Mine died before I ever could. He didn't leave me his intellect, but he left me his instinct. A sense that triggers when things are not as they seem. Okay, we don't have Wesley, but we got the next best thing. We have the writer and artist of Exiled, which is live right now. Adam, in the top middle here, has done uh, a lot of TV work and directing and all, and all kinds of stuff, aside from writing and stuff. Um, but it must have been, it must have been pretty cool, like actually hearing him, Wesley, do that narration stuff um, for oh, the yeah. video. Yeah, you know, so the way, you know, so, you know, I was a product of the 90s, you know, and I, so Wesley Stipes was somebody I looked up to for all my teenage years and into adulthood, you know what I mean? I yeah. faced all of his films, like, this is somebody that I was like, oh man, Wesley just, I looked up to him, I loved what he did, you know, it's like, he was in a film, I was watching it, and so it was pretty surreal, because um, Keith uh, Aram, he's another partner on the project, right. um, um, he and I had worked on this story about 10 or 11 years ago. Uh, we were at dinner with Wes um, and Antoine Fuqua when Radical Comics was about. If you remember that, right? Yep. Came for a stint. Yep. Exile was going to be one of those books, and then it oh. fell apart. And then we it was out of Exile at that time. And then we then you know, years later we met back up with Wes and um, we started reimagining the story and the character and, and we were exiled and then. Wes infused a lot of his insight and creativity into it, right. um, and it became something new, right? Um, so, you know, and so for me, obviously, it's like a dream, right? You're you're dealing with not only your childhood dream, but as a as a professional, it's like you love this guy, right? You yeah, love what he yeah. does on camera, and and we started recording actually this little radio drama that we were going to do, and that's where that voiceover came over. We're going to do this radio yeah, yeah, drama yeah. by that to it and there's just some availability issues but um um we got this bit of dialogue i know and it's like you kind of hear him in that you know give that raspy tone and it's oh, yeah, uh, yeah it's rad right i mean yeah um, it's not often you get to interact with, with somebody who is like you know i guess kind of like mike i mean we're talking about 
right. guy who crafted uh, Baron right here, you know, it's like you crafted Punisher, you're talking about Wesley Snipes, you crafted Blade, like you're talking yeah. people who made the characters you kinda like stood on. I don't I don't right. know what Mike's doing, man. He keeps wearing he keeps wearing these uh these tank tops with different I he's trying to I think he's trying to work the sexy angle or something. I don't I don't Yeah. I guess it must be nothing. It's hot here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, Little men wear pink. I'd like uh, to know I, how yeah. the, the writing came about. Did uh, you yeah. take notes when Wesley talked to you and you just took his ideas and worked up a treatment from that? Yes, yeah, so it was a combination of like, um, you know, Mike, you know, we had, hi, Wes, we've got this loose idea of a story. Right. Right. Um, and I can't quite give you the hook without kind of spoiling the book, but like, here's right. kind of have this hook for a story. And then it's like, Wes, what do you see out of this? Right. What's what's exciting to you about it? What does it work? What, what what can we do with this character? And so it had an idea, idea an idea to start with. Right, Mike. Um, but then it became much more, especially with the character really evolved into something much more deep. And um, his backstory, his relationship with his wife or his ex-wife, um, all of these kind of were, came about in these conversations. And then so then it's a back and forth. Right. Like, hey, Wes, here was the discussion. Here's what we did with it. Right. Um, and there was a back and forth and, uh, and then at this time also to my partner on it, Keith Aram, he's but also creatively involved in the storytelling side. Um, uh, but then that's when I brought Esquivo into the mix. Um, you know, and I can say this not in a negative light, you know, we've gone to many artists initially, more industry pros, um, or I guess I should say longer industry pros. Uh, but just availability and whatever. And it was harder than you think to get something. Any idea was going to be 140 pages. <laughs> I did. I think what I um, when I started day one, Mike. I don't think I said, "Oh, it's 140 pages day one," right? Yeah. Um, and I think then once I got outlining it and just beating out the pages, right? Then I realized this is what it is, and um, and it felt like you know what, um, we're kind of in this place where we we can. Maybe we bet the farm, right? We got West. Maybe we bet the farm. We we go all in. We do 140 pages. We do something crazy. Like a, yeah. It's almost like a movie. I mean, length wise for people. Sure, sure. A longer studio movie. Yeah. And I know, like, I'm sure you know when you're writing, like, I'm not sure your, your process, but I know when you look at a, a 140 pages, and obviously a skibo who's here to left writing, it's like drawing right now. It's like, boy, that's that's a task, right? Yeah. To like, hi, come on board. For eight months and do yeah. nothing else. Yeah, we're we're thirty pages in now. Okay. And um and Esquivo is making good time, and so I think we can very confidently make our delivery date. Um, we're gonna print locally in the U.S. Though this uh, guy will will print overseas. Uh, is your computer printed? Yes, I think. Oh yeah. So this is yeah. So it's a so Mike. So this was designed in ZBrush and made what they call an STL file. I'm sure you've done them before. Not and me. Then, <laughs> Not him. The artist he's worked with, though. Yeah, so then this is this is a 3D print of this one. You can see yeah, totally. pretty beautiful. Yeah, it's all, beautiful. All the detailing. You know, most sculptors, you I mean, you don't just say, sculpt me something. You give them a piece of artwork. Right. right. I mean, if you're in your right mind, right? And so... Um, and so Esquivo gave this, and what we really wanted, Mike, was a sense of action um, and, and emotion to it. You know, you can see with the coat, it's whipping. It's at all angles, right? Like this angle, yeah, it's a different sense of action. It's still cool versus this angle, right? right? Or even this. And so, yes, yeah, so that was 3D printed, Mike, um, which is not an economical way to print them. Right. It's not. You, you do it for your prototype to make sure your file works. Uh, but right. it's going to be injection molded um, so that we can produce a realistic, in, at a realistic price. You know what I mean? Yeah. What do you think? Like, was it a good idea? I'm not. Yeah. It was a brilliant oh, idea. Oh, you know, looks... now I'm thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it just, hey. You should do one, Mike. You should. You should. Yeah. I'll, I'll pass you my sculptor um, if, you, if you're interested. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. We'll have to discuss it. Yeah, yeah. I know you have the outline. You have script or whatever. I didn't know if you guys have like some kind of like, uh, so especially since you do TV, if you have a little bit of like a series Bible thing or yeah. something or. Um, yeah. So I, 
I, I built it like a, a series Bible, right? Yeah. Like for television. Um, and, you know, but I built it around saying, hey, here's our, here's our one arc story, right? right. And it's got to build into three acts, a little bit more like a feature film, right? Like, right. how are we going to ride this out? And so I've outlined it. So there's about a seven or, I should say, it's about, about an eight page outline that covers the broad strokes right. um, of the, you know, single space essays format that covers the entirety of it. And then there's breakdowns into the pages, right? Yeah. And, um, and that's like, you know, formal comic book script. Right. And then, and then because I letter the books, you know, um, and I, I letter them and I also hand draw all the special sound effects and, um, you know, bake them into it. It gives me one more time chance to rewrite it again. Yeah. Right. Yep. And I think sometimes, and maybe Mike, you feel this too. Sometimes you get the art back and you think, you know what, the way I'm saying that line, the way this is written, I should adjust it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, I'm either yeah. saying you on the nose now, or I need to say a little bit more because of however. And so I love that process of being the letterer, and, and it's creatively fun too. But to be able to say, you know, how can I then retell this story again? Right? Because I was the first person to touch it, and then the, kind of the last person. Um, right. You know, to kind of give you a quick pitch on the story, you know, yeah. the Exiled is the tale of. Niles wrote to Washington. He is a, a city detective um, who's got a bit of a broken past. He's living in the shadow of his father. His marriage has collapsed on him, and he's plagued by these these in, these these gut feelings uh, when he's chasing a crime that right. often wreck those around him. And he's tracking a serial killer and sort of ruining his life in the process, right? Because everyone at the force. And the city are saying, you're a madman. You're seeing something that's not there. Um, um, but it's there. And so in this process of chasing down this serial killer, he uncovers Earth's darkest secret. And through this horrifying, you know, crucifix, if you will, yeah, he yeah. reveals himself on the other side. Right. And so it's we're dealing with a man who has, has the weight of regret, and that has the weight of not living up to some hopes and expectations and right. this is his chance we're doing an ash can for the book that will release at uh san diego comic-con right oh cool yeah, um, yeah. we've got a booth there my uh partner on this keith um um he's got a um booth there so we're gonna have a big blowout there's a panel oh. with wes and um and you can see here these are we did we did a version of the book, Ashcan size, 5.5 by 8.5, you know, right. with gray tone pages, um, um, just for this special bit. And it's really awesome uh, to see uh, see the pages like this. You oh, know, yeah. here, here they are in this gray toned world. And we also have a version of the book called the Go version, which is manga size. Oh, cool. Right? And so, and it will be with gray tone pages, uh, right? As you can see, how good, what amazing work Esquivo has done. I mean, this double page that you put together is just beautiful, right? Yeah. Um, how big will the finished book to be, the regular version? Uh, Mike, it'll be 8.5 by 13 inches. Great. It's going to be huge. So if you can imagine, here's a good example. Um, there is Marvel did something a little similar in scope with this. Right? Here's a regular there comic book, and yeah. here's what right. this is gonna be like. So it's, it's gonna be a lot bigger, okay, and it will cool. be, you know, have this huge sensation, right? Where just is this small panels become come big, right? Right. Yeah. And I think there's something really nice and special about it. So there'll be a version of it this size on the campaign. And a version of it of right. this size. So you gotta get the pocket version in the gray tones, right? Right. And then you get big size in color. Um, and uh, I think that kind of is, is a nice thing to um, explore both worlds because manga's, you know, has such a voice now, and, uh, yeah. and I think there are a lot of people that enjoy reading reading comics that way. Uh, I'll show you some cool roughs that come over from uh, from Esquivo 
you get this, right? And, but you can see what then it becomes when he's doing it, right? Yeah. I never tire of that. Of like. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. See, so look at all that great expression there in the eyes and they do it with the size of the eyes and the shape of the brow. It really tells so much story. Um, and uh, really cool. Um, so, so, yeah, so that's, as I'm really grateful because Steve, I think, has been super passionate about this and been just, you know, because it's a crazy amount of page count, right, Mike? It's like, hi, yeah, so it's a big book. This image right here, the exile, this is kind of what sold Wes so much on on uh, Esquibo, right? When he saw this yeah. image. And oh, I think yeah. this is like the first time that, you know, Wes, we were talking about it, but that, then it became more than just an idea. This was yeah. the image um, yeah, that, that did it all. Who colored uh, that? So her name is Valentina Bianconi. Uh, she's an Italian girl, um, Italian co comic colorist. She's done a lot of work for Aftershock. Super yeah. awesome, uh, right? Yeah, Aftershock does some really nice work. They do. They do. Um, and she's really, you know, totally delivered on oh, these yeah. pages. Um, and, uh, you know, with with Wes, we, there's a lot of backers coming in who've never backed anything before. Yep. So I try to give a little training um, before they get in. Yeah. Um, but here's that limited edition, you know, look, you know, the cover. Right. Um, that's going to be, you know, hopefully, you know, this like Christmas morning, right? When you, when right. you get right like that's my hope is that this is this is christmas morning right like you the box comes in you open it up and it's, yeah and we have to of course get a custom box made because it's so big and then the figurine is so big and then it's like right. you know it's all this stuff but um but that's why you're in to backing a book right because it's right you can't get the local comic shop yep um you can see more of valentina's work here and also esquivo's work um, this was something that was all Esquivo here, this p image here of Wes. Like when I laid, when we talked about the layout for this page, he really did something special with it to fully ground us in this is Roach's story, right? This is him. Yeah. Um, and this page one says it all about who, how about who he is. Um, and then we get that beautiful double page spread that he did and like Valentina's colors and that fire, you know, and the, the, the gas attack, the red, she just, she's made that incredible. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and then this was a page uh, where Steve was channeling Frank Miller. You know, we, he yeah. and I talked about this for a while, we sent images back and forth, and it was like Marv and Sin City. It's like, we need this moment. Um, right, yeah. And then, um, and then you can see this is him with his, with his partner, Connor Lee and they're on the case and this serial killer has been ripping the spines out of his victim and using tools that are 5,000 years old. Yeah. Um, is that a real tool? Uh, is, it, is it a real tool? I mean, is um, it based in, in history? That's correct. Yeah. In Egyptian history. Spine ripper. Now, that, now the spine ripper, like I shouldn't say that like they were using it to rip the spines out of people. Right. It's uh, but the nature of its design, we that's where it started, right? Uh, in in the his idea, and then it kind of became like this tomahawk sort of tool. And you can see, look how cool this city is that Esquivo has built. This like noir city of the future, right? Um, she called Noir City. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. And then this is our killer. Um, in action, and um, and then we'll get another beautiful yeah. combination of Esquivo and Valentina. Um, and then I had Preston Acevedo. I think you know him. Oh yeah, love Preston. He's been doing great work for me. Work for me for a long time. You know, he's just a true Louisiana boy, right? Yep. Um, and I said, you know, it'd be cool to have a print with this Preston that kind of felt like heavy metal magazine yeah right yeah and that's what this it looks like to me um and so this is, a, this is a beautiful linen print that comes with the campaign and i just love it and then one thing wes brought up about early on was like hey adam it'd be cool if there was a way to implement you know an interactive component in some way so that's what got me thinking about this and what 
we've done is inside of the book, there are um, codes hidden in the pages. Right. And those codes will then work online to unlock digital collectibles that open this door to some ARG work, um, which is like an alternate reality game that leads you on a bit more of the story. It's going to unlock some events and get you some art. Um, and so it was a way to make the take the book one step further to make it interactive. Uh, and uh, so this symbol will be important for unlocking those codes later on. Cool. And this is a Go version of the book that we talked about. Um, uh, Kevin Castroniano did this cover, which I just freaking love. Yeah. Uh, and I had it so that, you know, the, 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 the edges, you know, are going to be painted. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So it feels, once again, like Christmas. It's a special something that you get. Here's the full wrap cover art. Um, and then there is, you know, this, this weapon, you know, Mike in action, uh, doing some spine ripping and, um, just, and, and this, I love this last panel that Esquivo did with silhouette and how much of the story that tells. Um, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And I like it, it in black and white too, but I, I like her coloring, but I do like it in black and white. Right. It's a different experience both ways. It's like Valentina's like, she's doing something rad here. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, this is also a fun, this also works, right? And right. Jason Krager, uh did the Grey Tones on it, who did my book, The Exiled. That's cool. And um, then there is the expanding of the universe in the Forgotten Wars. So this is a story that has ancient elements in it. And the Forgotten Wars is the ancient side of that. Um, and so it expands... The universe, I mean, the book itself, I we hopefully plan to be volume two, um, but the Ex Forgotten War, uh, Wars is another side of the story. So it's a pretty rad package. You're going to get, you're kind of getting this, you know, you're getting uh, the yeah. full trifecta here. You're getting great, yeah. all three, you know, in this experience. Um, Can you tell us why the guy's wearing a mask? So what happened there was this deadly gas attack in the city. And so people are wearing gas masks in different sequences um, because of a, not, not because of COVID, but because of an actual poison gas attack. And then here's the rad figurine um, that you've seen the real print of. And then here's me trying to show it to the world like, hey, it's, it's really big. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted... You know, Wesley doesn't sign things much, um, right. as in really never. And so we built this Ultimate Edition, got him to agree to signing 200 of them. So he'll sign all the books. Keith and I also, and Esquivel will also sign them as well. Um, but this is going to be this incredible collector's edition. You're going to get the signed copies of everything. And Wes signs nothing, you know. And um, it's this beautiful fold-out case you'll get all the stretch goals, you get all three books and you're going to get this one and only super limited print run, San Diego, 2022 Ashcan, um, nice. which has a beautiful die cut cover on top of it um, as well. That like has a cutout for, for uh, Roach here. So nice. these are truly a special collector or something. And then for those who are crazy and this already sold out this morning. Um, yeah. Wow. Um, to get yourself drawn into the book. But what we did is we made it cool. You get drawn uh, in and you say a line and your name gets said. And so you're not just a character in the background. You have a role, you know, in the story. Right. Uh, anyway, so we had 10 of the hosts, 1,200 a piece, and they, they sold out this morning. Wow. Um, so it was it was cool to, to get um, – you see a part of history and then we're already unlocking stretch goals uh, and it's not even five o'clock in LA. Um, yeah. So we've unlocked our first, we're going to do a series of trading cards that have this beautiful back, which is a reflection of the, well, it's the greater mystery to uncover. And um, the first card was done by Tyrell Cannon, who did that book, Beef Brothers, cool artist. And then um, the second card is on, uh, that we we're hoping to unlock today uh, is Clayton Barton. I think you guys know Clayton. Yeah. 
he's one of the one of the good ones. He and his brother drew it and colored it, and, and that's the ride. And, and then we're using it a a more proper fulfillment partner. So for people in Australia, it's not eight hundred dollars to ship it. It's shipped right. out through local hubs, um, and it skips the VAT taxes and other things. Um, and then here's here's that that's our other partner Keith on this we're here with West. Nice. So this is our this is our story. You know, this is the ride that is the exiled. Um, grateful for Esquivo, who's just been tearing it apart. And I think maybe Esquivo, you can talk for a second about like, I mean, what was your kind of inspirations as you were putting these pages together, doing the designs? I I always like to have like specific books like next to my desk to inspire me for whatever book I'm working on. And like, are we, are we, is this what we're talking about? Like. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like, what was kind of inspiring <laughs> when you're drawing this? So, yeah. You know, I immediately, you know, I, I think of, there's not that many, like, Blade Runner-inspired sort of books, so I kind of have to, like, take from everything I can, but I know, like, some of the biggest inspirations were these two right here, uh, The Joker and uh, Sean Murphy's Good Night. Yeah. Uh, those were in those books, and so I'm kind of trying to mesh them as, as much as I can, because this is also my first time inking myself in this book, so, uh, you know, I, I just want to make the best of it, and Use the best examples I can think of, you know. But yeah, that's those are my inspirations for this book specifically. That must be nice for you to be able to ink it yourself, though. I know a lot of artists like to do that uh, when t when time allows. Um, it's definitely intim an intimidating thing. Um, I you know I ink myself with like covers or pinups and that sort of thing. So, you know that's the same right. thing. You know, you, you just but this is is kind of different because like. When I'm doing storytelling, there's a lot more detail that needs to be put in and thought out. So I can't just like rush into like my anatomy and, you know, call it a day. I have to spend a little bit more time. So, you know, from doing a page a day now, you know, sometimes it's two days, you know, and right. yep. I don't know, you know, I, I, <laughs> I try my best to keep up. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a challenge. But at the same time, I do get the image that I want out specifically, you know, like right. with pencils, I'd have to like retrace the same little mark over and over again so that it stays. But with ink, it's just. You do it once and you're done, you know? Yeah. So I really do like that part. How many finished pages can you produce in a week? Um, so inked wise, if, yeah. you know, about three pages, you know, yeah. Um, if we're talking pencils, if I really push myself, you know, five, five a week. Wow. Yeah. 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 I, I'm trying to step it up with the inking, you know? I, I feel like you mentioned Sean Gordon Murphy and one of my favorites is Daniel Warren oh. Johnson. Yeah. You'd yeah. Be like these two guys, James Heron, same boat, right? Yeah. Don't you think, Mike? These guys are like trailblazing it out, and these guys are doing their own inks. Yeah. And I feel like they're this new trend in artists where it's like one is they can make a lot more money because they can sell their ink. Yeah. And there's a real market for that. Selling a pencil page is, I mean, some people can do it. Jim Lee can do it, but it's hard, harder for lots of people. But they're also just like, there's an element of the storytelling that happens when you take your thumb and you smear the ink. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and I feel like those guys are really, I, I mean, I don't what do you say. It's like the modern guys, but they're like the guys, I think are kind of like at the forefront. To me, there. they're showing that there is a beauty to imperfection. You know what I mean? Like, there, yeah. there's always been this obsession with like, I, I think of the 90s because in the 90s, well, not that everything was perfect in the 90s, but. You know, the, the crosshatching, we always try to take our sweet times with the inking, you know, make every single line look pretty. Well, you know, as, as amazing as that is, we're also getting now something different with these guys. And it's like, you know, now it's this, this sort of like messy feeling. Yeah. Brings, I guess emotion to it. You know what I mean? It's either, it either makes it more dynamic or it sets a tone for the book. And it's really, it's really cool because um, like Jim Lee, you could say, did something like that, but with penciling, you know, a right, lot of right. it was it was more speed related, but you know, it, it brought that feeling. And so like these guys are kind of doing that, but in a, with inks, you know, when we had uh, Kelly Jones on, he was talking about Bernie Wrightson and Bernie Wrightson got to the point where he hated how perfect, how perfect his art had become. So he started using uh, different, like different kinds of pencils, different kinds of inks that, uh, that he had less control over. So that there was, there was automatically a little bit more um, kind of added because he's like, he's like, I just can't hate it. And he, and he was like warning Kelly Jones. He's like, 
don't don't do this. He's like, he's like, don't let it get that perfect. Like it has to have some life and imperfection to I it. Know, manga is something else that I keep in the back of my mind. You know, right. a yeah. lot of people ink themselves. It's not, you know, and it, it, it's something that, especially like this new coming generation is loving. And I, I think it goes with what Daniel Warren Johnson and, and Sean Murphy are doing. You know, that, that, yeah. that's so funny to me. Imagine getting so good at something that you have to like mess yourself up on purpose to, you know. Oh, yeah. I, is there anything uh, that, interesting or unique about this uh about this uh, setting of like the world or like the way that world is that you can share without spoiling anything or yeah i mean as far as like the the simple setting of it is right is hence as mike said noir city right, right? um and that it, and that the world is set after a deadly gas attack that killed thousands of people in, right. in new york city and so um you know, and so is it, I think that, as we've mentioned, sort of Seven and Blade Runner, like, with Seven, is is that world of fantasy? Is it a future? No, but it's this, it's a haunting realization of a right. city. Right. Um, and then as far as, like, the bigger mystery, I, you know, I can't want to give any of that away. Right. But that will unlock a big pile of new things uh, about the world. So Very cool. Nice. Very cool. And uh, um, can you tell us anything about that, uh, the extra little book? That- yeah. Yeah, so the Forgotten Wars book. If I kind of like push it to you too much, it kills this. Right, 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 this, right. Uh, main book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but just know that it is set anciently um, and deals with some of the elements oh, cool. of the exile. So it's a part of that world. Um, and I'm very pumped to people to get into it. It'll be a, it'll be a different artist, um, not because Esquivo isn't the best, uh, just because he only has two hands. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so you're, you are a fan of cloning then. If you could, yeah, if you could exactly. clone Gabe, that would that would be great. Take uh, it. I, I did want to ask you to uh, talk a little bit about your. Um, I guess is he the co-writer? Um, like your buddy? Do, do you, have you written a few things with him? Um, as far as yeah, so Keith and I, I, I produced a movie that Keith directed. Um, we wrote another graphic novel years ago called Dead Speed, um, and so we've we've had quite a bit of a journey together. We I did a lot of work in video games. Um, um, together he's done um he's a voice director for for games and he did the call of duty franchise cool. um as, as and not to mention many others but um so that's been our journey together nice have you seen the ambulance uh, the the um no i haven't seen the film the new yeah michael bay film yeah how is it it's insane it's just <laughs> off the wall uh I don't know whether it's coherent or incoherent, but it's certainly worth watching. Okay. Done. Done. I think a lot of his stuff falls in that category. Well, he did 13 Hours, which is yeah. his most subdued and probably his best film. But I think so. Wow. Yeah. Your book Thank looks you. particularly intriguing because of the setting uh, uh, and the ambiance, which is part of the story. Whereas we yeah. see so many comics... That, that skimp on backgrounds and atmosphere. Yeah. Right. No, I agree. And it ends up kind of being a little, little dull. Yeah. 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 Was Wesley yeah. Uh, pretty balanced with this feedback and ideas he was throwing or was he like more geared towards like character or. Yeah. I mean, I think that like, I, I mean, obviously his stuff is always going to be more character because he's. Written an actor. Right. right. Through the eye of an yeah. actor. Yeah. Like what it would like to be it, you know. Right. Um, he had lots of good comments about, particularly in the early design phases of like, hey, that coat's cool, but you'd never wear that in a tunnel doing something tactical. Um, right. He had a lot of good insight like that. Um, but so so I think as far as that goes, like, yeah, the, I think a lot of it was character driven, obviously as an actor. Right. Um, but I think as far as general notes about the world as well. Um, yeah. As well too. And I think this that was one thing I think that early on we all kind of agreed on is what this, what oh, this yeah. looked this felt like so right yeah yeah no and then and it just made me think of it because of uh mike bringing that up about yeah you know the the whole and really especially it's always great in things like that where the city is kind of like a character too that's right it's it's definitely a character in this and i appreciate you saying that mike because it's like we built a world and a setting and a thing that feels strange but yet something you know esquivo are there any idiots that have called you Eskimo? Oh, all the time. I mean, I, it's, it's, I, it's cool, you know. I, it's, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I, I figured 
with a nickname like like that or or uh yeah it is what it is my goal right. is so that when you type in my name it doesn't auto correct you anymore right that's yeah. <laughs> out there because we love what we do and we're excited for the campaign and if anybody wants to consider jumping on in and backing you get our high five um one is you can just go to the kickstarter website and type in the exiled yeah. Or I know can, on the bottom of our screen here it says oh, inks oh, yeah. slash yeah. the exile. That'll take you right there. That'll take you right there. You better. This is a cool ride. You can come take it with us, and um, you know we're going to um, deliver you something with all our hearts in it. Mm -hmm.